Hey guys, welcome to another session of FFBE Global News. So this week we have a collab again. Star Oceans is back and uh, we have a new uh, unit. Sophia is uh, released. Um, now, from my knowledge, originally people were thinking that uh, JP would get uh, Star Ocean uh, the same week as Global. Like uh, in terms of <clears throat> JP had hung on to the Star Oceans units for like, I don't know, like more than a year and uh, they never received a seven star so i think global is now the first to release their seven star whether or not jp will have them i'm not quite sure i don't know if jp would ever you know do that like just go back and you know make money off of it i guess it makes sense for them to bring it but we'll we'll have to see uh what changes jp brings i'm just gonna assume that uh, jp has a whole different uh style of character i don't think they're gonna be using the same exact kit because JP's meta has changed so much right now that a lot of the skills that like Rina and Fate get and even what Sophia has um, is kind of different from what JP is where JP is right now so I'm not quite sure uh, how that will look but we know that uh, when Global implemented Star Ocean we knew that uh, we already had some differences uh, particularly I think uh, Rina's uh, uh, TMR was like the biggest difference it's actually usable in Global I don't think it was really usable in a JP, uh, but regardless, here we go. So first time seeing these units having their seven star form, and of course, this is good on uh, Gumi's promises. Uh, they promised that, uh, oh yeah, if you pull for this banner, we're thinking a seven star, and I think that's what helped people actually pull for it. Um, uh, prior to JP knowledge of JP. Either way, let's talk about the banner first. So it seems that they're splitting this up to two. Uh, regardless, Sophia, because he, she's the new one. Uh, she's on both step up banners, so you, it's actually locked only to uh, Rena and Sophia on one banner, and then the other one is Fate and Sophia on the other. Uh, let me see if I can see this. Um, I didn't do my homework, but I wanted to see if it's locked to them or do they get higher rate. I'm assuming it's just locked to them. Uh, well, then we're not added, just selected summon pool. Uh, yeah, note here, uh, these units are added to the EX and 10 plus 1 summon pools for the first week of the event without any increased drop rate. So they just added straight to the pool. Okay. Oh, I don't think it says that anywhere. I, uh, you know, sometimes my eyes just skim it when, uh, especially when I'm like making content. I'm just like, I miss stuff. So if you guys can answer that question, uh, you know, you guys know the answer to that question. Feel free to drop it in the comments below under... Um, but I'm going to assume they locked it. I don't think they're going to be pulling another one of those uh, Valkyrie profile things. Hopefully they don't. Um, otherwise, it's kind of pointless showing their uh, their images on the separate banners. Uh, I'm assuming they're locking it. So like, if you're pulling on the arena step up, you can't pull Fate. That's what I'm going to assume. So let's do the calculation here. There's a 20,000 20, lapis per lap. Uh, three steps. Oh, three. Sorry. 20,000 20, per lap, 3 laps, but 5 steps. Uh, 1.5 times rate up on the step 3, step 4, and step 5, you get a guaranteed. Step 4, you get a 2 times rate. Hmm. What's interesting is, like, I was doing a light, light reading on their kits, and it seems to be that, uh, that Fate is becoming a monster. But whether or not he's worth pulling, that's a whole other thing, because... Axtar could be coming. Well, Axtar is coming, but just not soon, probably. First, let's talk about Sophia here. Um, so we have a uh, data mined info right now uh, as I'm making this video. This is Thursday, so right after the maintenance. I chose to do it today because otherwise it would just be me flambling on um, talking about uh, what I think they could be. Um, but Sophia's hairpin, super trust mastery. Let's do that. Uh, magic and spirit 60 um, flat, which is good. Fire resistance is 30, and then enables uh, symbol symbologist bond, Sophia only, which boosts magic by 50 and MP by 20. Hmm. Uh, in terms of like an STMR that would be used everywhere, um, I think I think other units, uh, other mages would probably benefit from like rems stmr still 
The the base magic and spirit is really high, so it works really well with someone like Grimlord Sakura's STMR. So whether or not, uh, so that's a, a true double hand uh, magic and spirit split. So if you have, let's say, I don't know, maybe a healer or a, may, most likely a mage, you put those two STMRs on and I think you got a really powerful one. The only problem is that uh, this enable um, the symbologist bond is Sophia only. So let me take a look at her for a second. I just want to see if she has innate TDH uh, magic. Yeah, she does. I'm single wielding any weapon. Yeah, so she has 30%, it seems. 30% uh, TDH magic, which could work well. That uh, that means, yeah, obviously um, her SDM would be best, well, uh, her best in slot, for sure. Um, and then uh, maybe someone like Rumler Sakura's uh, SDMR to top it off. Uh, but of course, I'm talking about limited units there, so if you don't have that, obviously you could uh, swap in like Magna's TMR. Uh, unless it's a... Uh, unless it's a... Like a double hand rod, I guess even... Um, hmm. Wait, actually, let me see her TMR. Trust Mastery. Uh, ability here. Trust ability... Huh. It's odd. Either it's not updated or I don't. Oh, I see. It's triple cast. Okay, so that's quite needed. So until the QOL QOL change that JP has, where you get the trust ability from the STMR itself, her TMR will be the best so far. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think in this new segment I will cover Medina's got her STMR now. So you're going to be missing out about uh, 40, so 100, 120 magic. 120 magic. Um, equipment magic, uh, if you have a 300% uh, TDH magic. Um, not u not using someone with a higher higher magic rod if you have to be stuck with their TMR But I think for the time being it has to be the best in slot because You would really ideally want to triple cast it so um Yeah, and then talk talking about her trust master ability. I'm gonna bring something up here uh, or trust mastery uh, It's a good one. It's definitely a good one uh, Duplicate here I want to compare something. I know that uh, there has been other rods right now released that has been uh, pretty high, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think hers is the highest TMR or equal to like equal to someone else. Um, but it's it's pretty good. And uh, for Sophia, only has an MP restore every every turn. But regardless, and for TMR, 135 is 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 really good. And Keep in mind that, of course, this is a raid event, so you get it for free if you pull her. Uh, you, without using a single trust moogle, you should be able to get it for free just from the raid moogles itself. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm not going to go through too too deeply about Sophia. Um, she has deep freeze here. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a freeze chaining skill, so chainable with someone like Medina uh, and other units who have that skill available. Um, not gonna talk about fireball. I think it's a it's a fire damage skill which has a, like damage over time. Uh, but she has at her seven star form she has chaos wave chaining. Now I myself I'm kind of like I don't know I'm kind of getting bored of the fact that like, whoa man this person's got chaos wave chaining. Like if that's if that's the only thing we need now to pull for a mage I don't really get it. Um, definitely, I would th I would definitely think that um, the modifiers are definitely really important. So it's really important to actually talk about it. I mean, she has two two uh, chaos chaining skills, which is perfect for TT, but may not be perfect for other TT chaining partners coming down the line. 
uh, fire a split between the fire damage skill and then a uh, dark damage skill. So Ifrit is a fire damage skill. It's a four times uh, magic mod. Um, five times stack, two times each. So 14 times max to all enemies. So you get uh, 10, 10, 10 times, 10 times magic damage mod uh, after stacks, plus the initial four, so 14 times. And the same thing for the dark. So Ravenous Fiend is the dark damage one. Of course, you could triple cast it. That won't be perfect chainable with uh, someone like, let's say, uh, TT, but that might work well with someone like Grimlord Sakura if you want to chain with her. She's a, She has a nate triple cast as well with her TMR equipped. So to me, it's like, I don't know, it feels like the same unit, almost, almost. Uh, and then Sophia, other than the, the mods, hold on, let me compare, uh, do my due diligence here, Grim, Lord, Sakura. I just want to compare the mods here, and I know that later on, and uh, you know, some other more knowledgeable people on my Discord would be able to tell me, hey, you know, later on, there's this, this unit that could TT chain, but it has like this much this much, uh, you know, mods. Um, so like T, T uh, so Grimlar Soccer is mods eight times, seven times max. Okay, so nowhere near close to Sophia. Sophia stacks quicker and has more damage. Huh. I kind of feel like now, uh, oh, I see, but, but, uh, Grimlar Soccer has an imperil. Um,. And Grimlord Sakura's Chaos Wave Chain is a dual elemental chain. So you only benefit from... Hmm... 7 times max, but it has a 50% damage, like 50% fire and dark imperil. So arguably it's the same amount of damage. If you're talking about solo damage, um, that would still be a 14%. So Grimlord Sakura caps at a 7 times max, but it has a 50% damage, like... Elemental imperil of the elements she's doing, so it is 14 times. But it feels like Sophia is a, a, a stronger TT chainer, chaos wave chainer, uh, because she stacks quicker. And if you have those imperils outside, she'll be able to, do, to be able to do more damage. She can do an imperil with her LB, which is quite cool. Um, even at the base. I think at the seven star base at least it has a hundred percent fire in peril. Uh, that's not saying it's level one. I think you have to get it to a seven star base, so level twenty five, I believe. It's a one hundred percent fire in peril, um, but it has its own. Uh, it's a five hit skill at max with a twelve point nine times magic damage mod with a fifty percent ignore spirit. So it's very strong actually. Um, that ends up to be almost 30, 30 times a uh, magic damage mi modifier, uh, but has a 100% fire like fire debuff, which then you could use uh, Efreet. Uh, I don't think there's any way to actually imperil. Oh wait, yeah. So you can use Efreet with 100%. So that's that's really strong, very strong for Sophia there. Uh, she has the skill Southern Cross. Reduce fire and dark resistance and deal fire and dark magic damage to all enemies. Uh, it's a six times magic damage mod with uh, one hit. So kind of a finisher. Not that great, but the imperil is really nice. Last three turns. Uh, yeah, so the damage can wrap, wrap up a lot. It's a 75% fire and dark resistance uh, imperil there. So... Technically, you can ramp up really quick because if she has unconditional triple cast with her TMR equipped, uh, you can imagine use. Uh, it's available on turn one, by the way, Southern Cross. Uh, it's pretty much not. You could use it non stop. I wonder if you could dual cast this, though. No, it says no. So you can't triple cast or dual cast Southern Cross into the, into the rotation. Which kind of sucks in that in that sense, but it, I would it would probably be too OP. Another notable skill, I suppose, is that she has Stone Rain, which is a Quake Chaining skill. Uh, stackable skill five times stack up to an eleven point five times Magic Damage modifier, uh, which again really strong. 
uh, doesn't do an imperil itself, but if you're chaining with someone with, with Quake, let's say, you already get a 50% earth imperil while you're chaining, so, uh, all in all, pretty good. Um, one second, I want to check something. For Medina, uh, if I remember correctly, Medina has Tornado and has Freeze, but not Quake. Because Medina can triple cast her black magic, so... Just want to see if it gels well with uh, Medina. Triple black magic. Yeah, no, she doesn't. So, so yeah, she has Freeze, which can chain with Sophia. But then she has Tornado. Who can triple cast and has Quake? I don't know, leave it in the comments below if I'm not missing something. But If I'm missing it, but I'm pretty sure someone could triple cast and a chain with Quake there. Uh, so yeah, that's it for Sophia for me. So, I mean... For now, she's good, but will she be relevant? I'm not quite sure. There's a whole there's a whole other debate right now. It's that uh, some people I know are holding out for the Xeno Gears banner. Now, whether or not that will be coming, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. I think Xeno Gears is out by now. So, in the JP timeline, I believe that after Folka, Xeno Gears came, and after Xeno Gears like ff10 came and after ff10 it was like uh it was like sid or something like that or ignacio i might i might have like slipped this in somewhere but um we're not that far off from uh, jp's release of a uh, xeno gears which which you know begs the question is is global going to even release xeno gears i know that a lot of people are like oh i hope xeno gears is coming and i think i, I i'm on the fence that I'm positive that they're gonna bring it, but now with like them having like the technically this is a global exclusive <coughs> um, banner. JP never had this. Will Xeno Gears be delayed or even Xeno Gears come at all? I'm not quite sure. Like, is she is she the replacement for Ellie, right? Because this is really strong for the meta right now, Chaos Wave wise. But is she a replacement for Ellie? I'm not quite sure. That would be a question for another time, I suppose. Perhaps on a theory craft. Um, and of course, this is founded on some some facts, timelines, what we have in front of us right now in terms of the banner. So I'm not quite sure. But uh, let's talk. Let's keep moving here. Rena Healer, uh, Knuckles of Hope, good good uh, TMR. Like I said, this has changed from the JP version. JP, I think, is like flipped exactly. Like attack is like 110, spirit is like 20. But it was kind of weird, and I think Global found it to be weird too. Like, why would she have a super high attack, um, you know, TMR? And I think for a time that this TMR was great. It was good for for Leela users when Leela was sort of meta uh, before Seven Star came, uh, especially Hyo. It was good for Rena. It was good for even Awaken Rain for some builds. So um, it's quite quite good. Uh, STMR, I'm I actually quite like as well. Uh, 54 flat spirit again it works well with with uh, someone who is uh, going true double hand spirit which at the moment we don't have that many options in terms of like you know materia and tmr that feed off of that but uh, you know some people have that in, in their innate kit uh and i think uh someone like again grimlo soccer's stmr if you don't have it it's you know kind of sad but if you have it, it would work well with this, but it has a 10% spirit on top of it. With 54, it's really good. Uh, enables well-fed, and this is not locked arena, that's why I like it. Restore MP per turn, um, and I think it's yeah, it's a 5% MP. Uh, LB fill every uh, every turn, it's a 2 LB, and it resists all status ailments. So it's, it's ribbon, uh, but a way more like steroided jacked out ribbon <laughs> has all those benefits of course and so like if you are running a healer without status ailments like innate status ailment protection uh this sdmr is going to be great because rena really needs it rena doesn't have any innate status ailment protection um wait one sec let me make sure that's the case okay she has some she has she has uh, resistance to paralysis and stop but everything else I don't think she has so this would be like perfect for her and of course other healers but not a lot of healers have like 
like absolutely no status ailment protection uh, most healers do have them so the question is now is rena like top tier i would say i've never i've never really considered rena like a like just a healer she's definitely like a buffer like as good as like cg nicole but in her seven star form um you know i think she holds up i want to talk about her lb first her lb uh, not listed here, but her LB Angel Feather at a 7 star max. It has increased to, uh, so remove all break from all allies, AoE break redu reduction, um, and also increases all, all buff 150% to all allies. Um, that is very, very good. And I think that does fall now under Nicole 7 star, which also is released today. Um, but she has a heal, uh, 3000 HP, 25 times mod, split over 3 turns to all allies. That's like, that's way overkill heal. Um, that's like over Karaja mod heal for 3 turns over all allies. Uh, so you're getting pretty much a Karaja per heal. Depending on your build, you're getting probably like roughly like 10,000 to 12,000 HP healed per turn for 3 turns. Uh, those buffs last 3 turns as well. And uh, it just removes breaks, right? Remember, it's not a break resistant. Um, and it has an MP refresh of a t uh, 120 MP, uh, 3 turns over all allies. That's a 0 0.7 times mod, which isn't too much. So roughly, you can guess this at it's about a 40, a 40%, oh, sorry, 40 MP split over, over, uh, over time. Which honestly isn't too much. I would prefer almost Nicole's LB in terms of the MP, MP restore because you you get it instantly um but hers is split uh, again uh adding to her seven star kit she has a uh, 100 percent like revive ko everyone while arguably that's not th that useful in this meta coming down like we're, we're really in need of more re-raise meta over just raise because once you raise like the, this is a revive so this is a raise dead plus i don't know if it's listed nope Raise this plus 100% HP, you know, revive KO to all enemies. But at this point, like, all allies, I mean, at this point, the re unless your tank is alive and it's still able to cover, your whole team is going to be dead by the next turn anyway. So it's not super useful. Now, it can be, it can be dual casted. So that's somewhat, that's some, something good. But it, I don't know, I think... I think re-raise is much more useful than raise. Um, I ran into too many situations where I'm like, I relied on like AOE raise and at the end, I just don't use it. Like I don't use it on uh, on Fina, I don't use it on Ayaka, I, like I never use it. But the AOE re-raise aspects or the AO or the re-raise aspects on any healer, I use like all the time, but I, I barely use the AOE raise. So I don't know how, how useful that is. She has another skill in shelter plus as a damage mitigation 20 percent for three turns of all allies again like i said like if she's trying to compete with nicole she's not quite there if she's trying to compete with another like great healer she's not quite there one thing that she has since her six star is that she can dual cast an attack and defense buff 150 percent like like no other condition so it's super strong it's super strong um but but now again with nicole out there like nicole as a buffer, his, uh, you know, heal HP over time skills are so good, and depending on how you build him, you don't really even need to run a healer most of the time with Nicole. If you could sustain his uh, MP, his uh, all his buffs are just going to keep your whole team alive. You don't even need a healer. The only thing is that he doesn't have any re-raise or raise skills, which, which technically uh, Rena does have raise skills. But again, you swap on like something like Phoenix onto Nicole, and you already got sort of like a Ben Arena in that case. So again, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to justify how good Arena is, and I'm not really seeing it there. Now, obviously, hopefully this doesn't offend anyone. Doesn't mean that you should not be pulling for Arena. I have one Arena, so I'm kind of like, should I go for her? For STMR wise, I I will say right now I'm not super like super overly hyped about all three. Uh, well, actually, Fate's STMR, I'll get to that, is probably the only one that I'm interested in right now. But uh, I have zero Fate. So, spoilers, spoilers. 
Um, yeah, so let's go. Mother's Protection. Let's talk about the skills right here. Uh, revive 80%. Sorry, auto revive. So this is the re race skill that I was talking about. Uh, is this dual castable? It's it's not dual castable um, from the reading of it. I could be wrong, but it's 80%. Uh, AoE re raise. Six turn cooldown, though, but available on turn one. Um, so it is usable, but it's not as spammable as someone, let's say, CG Fina uh, LB. And uh, even CG Fina has AoE re raise with this cooldown skill. You work that like with with her LB, and she has almost spammable AOE re-raise. Um, I think this is the same amount of turns as Rem's AOE re-raise skill. So I'm not gonna dock off too many marks for this. It's good. It's good that she has it. it seems that it's not dual castable though. It doesn't need to be dual castable for her to be relevant because it's an AOE re-raise and not single target. But I think it is still missing in her kit to be a top tier healer. It's not it's not there. But I will say that because she's not really a healer per se, she's like a damage dealer. Remember that she does have like skills that skill from uh spirit since her six star. But in her seven star she has something even more insane. She has uh, something that she learns at level 110 called Light Cross. Light magic damage, so keep that in mind. That is locked to light, though. A 10.4 times magic damage, but scaling from spirit. And it's a Divine Ruination Chain. You don't need to dual wield it. Technically, you can have her um, with Equip Shield, or you can, you can dual wield it, doesn't matter. But apparently, it's a 14 hit. Like, innate. So even if you don't dual wield her, let's say you go a uh, true... True dual, true dual, no, true double hand, true double hand uh, fist, like true double hand spirit build or something. Um, she'd still be able to do it. 14, 14 hit, according to, at least to the wiki that I'm reading here. So is that good? That seems to be pretty strong. A, four, a 10 times, 10.4 times spirit skill, skill is very, very strong. The only thing is that your spirit will never be like let's say like a 2600 where let's say like someone with like a I don't know I don't know the math at the end let's say something like with Orlando uh, with all the true true dual wield TMRs and with all the new STMRs out like you deck them out like full STMR like someone like Orlando I think it's like what ends up being like a seven seven point something times physical damage mod of divine ruination but you have like an over 2000 2200 2400 uh, attack Orlando like would this beat it I'm not quite sure but regardless it's nice to have again keep in mind this is on a healer so this adds points to Rena. solid healer no you know she's just not like top tier healer but she's a damage dealer too so that adds points to her uh let's see here reflection boost spirit i think this is her six star skill yeah that's a six star still skill so that's not really new i'm not gonna talk about it she has a, f a skill cooldown skill at her seven star called fixed cloud available on turn one before turn cooldown uh it's a magic magic damage four times Spear scaling to all enemies. Four times magic damage mod. Uh, has a 60% inflict stop two turns to all enemies. I would only see that useful being in the arena. Um, because again, haha, arena, arena, pun. Wah, wah. Cringe. Because she has stop resistance, so she she'd be like someone like you want to bring for Ayaka. She has enhanced D spell, which can remove stop as well. So with fixed cloud, it was it would be kind of like, you know, people running Ayaka with uh, the annoying frozen hurricane. But let's say like on a on a week where ice is forbidden, you can use fixed cloud. So, but again, of course, both both cases, frozen hurricane and the skill would be nullified if stop is not if uh, enfeeblements are are uh, you know forbidden for that week. Regardless, this is some some little highlight, I guess. Uh, seven star with TMR equipped, she gets a forty percent spirit and MP boost. 
a decreased 30% chance of decrease being targeted, which is kind of useful. Uh, especially if she doesn't have like AOE re-raise or any other re-raise skill other than that CD skill. Uh, increase LB fill rate by 50%. Useful. She needs a spammable LB. And uh, that's pretty much it. I, that, that's all I want to talk about. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be pulling for her. Uh, I have to figure out how the banner works. Like, is Rena locked to the Rena banner and Fate locked to the Fate Sophia banner? I'm not quite sure. Fate is an interesting character. Um, in his 6 star form, everybody was just like, Oh, Fate's good. He's really strong. But he really only chains with himself. And, uh, and what is it? Fidel, I think is his name. Um, but his STMR, what definitely caught my eye. But at the same time, you'd be questioning, like, you know, do I need any more physical damage dealing, you know, TMRs and STMRs? Answer, if you want to flex, yes. <laughs> Fate's clothes, pretty good. A 38 attack. That's a very high attacking clothes. That's better than Adam Jensen's TMR, which I mentioned earlier when Adam Jensen was released. Like, oh, this is going to be one of the best STMRs if you're a gunner. Now, if you have Lunith's clothes, for someone like Axtar, you most likely want Lunith's clothes. And I think Axtar is going to be definitely a hinging point in terms of meta. He's like Hyo when Hyo was released. Um, but better. <clears throat> he's last he's lasted longer in JP. And so I believe Axter is gonna be the next hype banner uh for the long like the longest time. Heal was cool because Heal like brought in like chainable true dual wield uh sorry true double hand uh with backloading hit and he really introduced that to us, at least on global. Um, but uh, Axar, I think, is where it's going to be at. Uh, self imbue, stackable skills with backloading hits, and all that good jazz. And Katana meta is coming. And so, you know, Fate's Clothes is only irrelevant because it has uh, a 50% boost uh, with sword equipped, 50% attack. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's irrelevant, it's just that it won't be used on Axar. It's still very usable with all the recent units that's released like some global exclusive units and I've been finding myself like Let's say Sora, you know um, Yeah, actually, you know keep in mind of Sora that's just released if we get the JP like like mod boost later when global gets to the JP timeline Sora becomes an insane physical damage dealer uh, 14 times stacked AT skill which here fate also has so I want to get into that as well but his SDMR would be like perfect for someone like Sora so I want I want you guys to keep that in mind like uh, unless you can cap Sora's attack really early on without using this then Luna's clothes would still be better for him but otherwise this would be good so like to me fate is like the one I actually want to pull on which is really odd because in the first time around I was like no one should pull for Fate, and I think everybody was mostly going for Rena, other than uh, Nostalgia and um, the, the, your love of the, the hero or the unit here. But uh, otherwise, let's move on to his skills. Um, I do want to talk about it. He does have a skill, Learn at 7 Star, though. It's an AT skill, 6.5 times physical damage mod, with an 11 times stack. Um, with a 0.5 times each which equals to 12 times mod so 11 times is quite a lot but you can use his skills you can dual cast his skills so technically you can get it by what turn six no 11 times so two times yeah so about about six turns you could get a fully stackable skill now it's a 12 times mod it's it's very good uh it, it works up to about axe star level so we're getting like really like you know early early access to like axe or power from like draco laswell um even sora released our version of sora is actually pretty decent too um and then now fate so the question is i don't think that he's fate's gonna get a an, an, another buff because unless jp has like an insane plan for fate here i don't see fate being further buffed than he is um so i think i think he's good 
I think he's definitely good. Um, he has a he has a cooldown skill. This in enhanced aerial is a 14 times AOE physical damage modifier. Um, and after using it, you increase the modifier for air raid. So his primary chaining skill during his six star. Um, Blade of Fury, Charge, and Enhanced Shotgun Blast, you increase it by another two times. So, you know, arguably you would work this into the rotation, perhaps perhaps after Enhanced Shotgun Blast is at his max cap, like, you know, max stack, then you would use this to add additional two times mod, or you start it off with an additional two times mod early on, so it's an 8.5 times physical damage modifier, and it ends up maybe being a 14.5 times. I would, I probably need, I probably need, uh, sorry, f 14 times. Probably need clarification on that if that's how it works for the stacks. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works. If it's a 99 MP skill. Loot item, that's a 7 star skill too. Increased common and drop rate, uh, and rare item drop rate by 50%. I suppose that's nice if you want to run him as like a perma, I don't know, permanent like story event or like uh, crist crystal cave grinding unit but again um as uh you know Go uh, global official has stated that 100 percent is is capped like you, you can't go over 100 percent. so something with like zon and like you know great raven's cape and a couple pod 153s and you're done so it's like kind of not necessary i suppose that's like a kind of like a filler skill to me um with the tmr equipped he gets a 30% LB damage, so 1.3 times mod. That's really high, actually. Uh, LB gauge fill rate of 50%, and then attack HP and MP 20% increased. Uh, let's talk about his LB. Um, physical damage. It's a 12 hit. I don't think it's chainable with anything except himself. Uh, 12 hit, 8 times physical damage mod with a 50% ignore. And that would be 16 times mod right there. Pretty strong. And it reduced the 70%. Uh, it's a 70% imperil for all elements. So it doesn't seem that he gains much other than the modifier itself when you max out the LB. I'm not sure if that's a worthy maxable LB. Um, like, it's a lower damage mod technically um, than his chainable uh at chaining skill like it's like right like it's near it's like two two mod off but it's it's not chainable with anyone so i would like almost stick to the at chaining <sighs> and of course keep in mind that his uh, tmr if you want his trust ability is a light elemental sword so his imperial works well with that so arguably he could output a lot of damage but that's really all he is, and you know, are we are we tired of physical damage dealers? I honestly don't think we will ever be. You know, if the people tell me like, AJ, hey, can I have too many physical damage dealers? But the thing is, like, that's like probably like the most fun in this game, in my opinion. Like, mages are cool too, but physical damage dealers are really, really, really cool because you can get their attack really high, so you can feel really good about yourself. <laughs> cry, cry in the corner. I have no friends, but I have this really strong, uh, strong uh, physical damage dealer. Look at my uh, 2.8 2.8 uh, uh, K uh, KH cloud. I'm, I'm talking about me. QQ. Okay, anyways. <coughs> I'll talk about uh, whether I think this banner is pullable or not um, uh, after afterwards. So something to note that they also gave us uh, Star Ocean uh, ticket summon banner. So, you know, originally, like, when I, when I looked at it, I'm like... <gasps> Are they giving us exactly what JP has? You know those uh, those uh, what are they call those those F E B E F E B tickets F E B tickets, where you get the limited units like based on how much you pull, but it's not really. Um, you you get an increased drop rate for Sophia Arena and Fate, Fidel and Ro and Rodic. so it's just like a regular summon ticket. It's like those Halloween all those event tickets, um, but you get them from login, so it oh it's like kind of. No, kill kill the hype but uh whatever it's still still good free free tickets hopefully you guys get the five star units you want here hopefully i get lucky as well i actually do want fate actually he's actually kind of cool
And we have another return, uh, Final Fantasy Type-0, it seems to be a King Mog event, so they're gonna do this just like JP, and just like what we have experienced, some return, uh, return of old events, which is good for newer players, and even players like myself, which missed the first event, to be able to run this, and it actually gives me a good reason to actually 7 star my queen, which I've never gotten a queen before until like this, e well, 2018 I guess. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so it's gonna be really easy, at least it's something on the side that we can grind. Uh, there are other news pieces from this week, which is like all those like lapis login bonuses, whatever. I'm not gonna cover it, I think it's, you know, I don't need to, self-explanatory, you guys could do the reading. Um, so I'll, that's what I'm gonna say here. Excited to do this, finally, um, 7 star my queen, perhaps I'll pot her just for fun, and gear her up. I wanna see how strong I can get her. And we have 7 stars awaken awakenings today. Today, as I'm making this video, a lot of people are already doing this on Discord. They're like, made their like, I don't know, like cane or whatever. So it's pretty crazy. A ton of units here. Uh, I have a lot of... Again, I, I've been, I've been kind of changing my style of play. Like a lot of people are like, oh, Jagan, like how do you have so much gill? It's like, I don't make every unit 7 star when I get them. Um, the reason is because like, I have too many like STMRs that I want to fuse. So... All my gill is saved for a unit's STMR that I could get, and that's like high priority STMR. So out of all these, I don't think I have any STMR except uh, Nicole. I think I have like six or six of him now? Maybe? Six, I think? Six Nicoles. Let's say six Nicoles. Either five or six. And I have three Medinas. Don't have her yet, sadly. QQ. Uh, I would like her STMR. And I have Lid's STMR too. Um, so two STMRs out of this one, let's move on to the other one, let's see here, oh right, yeah, yeah, so only those two, um, which, you know, arguably is good, but I think, hmm, actually, you know what, I think I will make, uh, we'll make Lid's STMR, if I remember correctly, Lid's STMR is LB Gilf, uh, LB uh, fill every turn, but it's three LB, like three crystal, or three, three gauge rather. So, um, in three or four turns, she gets her full LB, even without getting a single crystal. That's really, that's really good, actually. Uh, and boost damage to physical uh, to machine monsters. The only thing is, I'm not quite sure who I would put it on. But again, I was just saying this when I when I beat the full story event. I'm like Kryla is like. Like one of the best breakers until like Lid gets her seven star and enhancements, and then here we go. Lid already gets her seven star. So if you don't have Kryla, you have Lid, and Lid is solid, very solid. Same as CG Nicole, his seven star will help in a lot of trials. And actually, the only reason why I was like, huh, is because I realized I don't have any other rod STMRs except Nicole's right now, which 151 magic. It's an improvement from my Mateus Malice. So I'm definitely gonna do it. Uh, I'm boost evocation damage for Leviathan, which is cool too. There's a lot of theory crafting I want to do here. Like with dual wielding it, you know, what's the potential of Leviathan damage if you dual wield two Nicole STMRs? And you know, someone out there who is a Mega Will who is watching this might have two STMRs. You should do a test. Put it on your strongest Evoker with the maximum Evo Mag. How much damage could you output with Leviathan compared to? You know, I don't know how much, how much, uh, wait one sec. I'm curious. How much more damage though? Maritime, Strategist, Nicole. Let's pull it up here. Uh, Divine Art of War. 75% evocation damage. Uh, what? Okay, that is that's definitely worthy. Okay, one sec. Usually in my news videos, I don't break out of news mode to go into my units, but I want to see how many uh, Nicoles I have here because not that I will actually ham for him. He's one of my off banner units. Okay, so I have one there. I know the rest I've never made into six star, so they should all be here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so five only. So, oh, okay, I'm not as far as I thought. Five, not six. So, one STMR. Okay, so uh, when I get two STMRs, 
I'll probably do a test, but I'm pretty sure someone will run a test of how how powerful that is. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for the news this week. Another 45 whopping minutes of me rambling on of stuff that I'm not sure about. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you going to be pulling on this? Maybe you already have two Fate. Maybe you already have two Rena. Or maybe you already have their STMRs. Maybe you're just a crazy will on that first banner. But wouldn't that make you salty? Because like, what if you want Sophia and now you have to like pull on their step up and this split? Ouch. Actually, that would be pretty salty. That would be pretty salty. It's like you have Rena and you have Fate STMR, but it's like, oh, Sophia look good. <gasps> Crap. You know, like you wasted so many resources and. I know like some people pulled like a ton of stuff, not even getting what they wanted. Again, like I said, I have one Rena, zero Fate, and of course, zero Sophia. So I don't know whether or not I'm going to be pulling on this. Uh, you know, I already said like, I always said like, oh, I'm going to save my resources for limited banners, but I really feel like Xeno Gears it could be coming soon, maybe by the next raid event. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is it worth the risk? Are you going to skip this banner for the, you know, potential Xeno Gears banner? Or will we, or, or will we see no gears? <gasps> Pun? You know, will we not see that banner? I'll, I'll let myself out of the room now, man. Anyways, let me know what you guys think and thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this has been informative and uh, starts off a discussion So if you guys have discord check out the discord server follow me on Twitter and subscribe to YouTube if you haven't as always Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time